about a company that we collaborate with, Food 2050. You might ask yourself, you know, what are we doing at I'm Not Plastic? Uh, what roads are we following? What avenues are we following to try and make the world better? This is one of them. Uh, Fred from 2050. Fred, welcome to the show. It's good to have you on the Robbie Crew show. Uh, but tell me a bit more about Food 2050. Who are you guys? Thank you, Robbie. It's nice to be on the show. It's a privilege for us to be part of it. Food 2050, as the name would suggest, has a lot to do with food. And you'd be surprised to know a couple, or become familiar with a couple of facts. One is that we, in South Africa, we consume about 30 million tons of food per annum. The other part is that we only physically utilize 20 million tons. So 10 million tons goes to waste. It's food that we never see. It's produced by the farmers. It basically uh, goes, let's talk about the 10 million tons. Where does all of that 10 million tons go? 5 million tons just ends up on the farms itself. And then the rest is about 4.5 million tons per annum. That goes to waste from the farm to the point of consumer. And then us as consumers, we waste about 0.5 million tons. So. 5% of the total is wasted domestically. And so, what's, what's the big problem? What, what made you guys decide, well, this is something that we need to do. Food, Food 2050 is a company we need to start, and why? Food 2050 is a company that basically comes from a solution uh, viewpoint. We looked at the food cycle, um, and we realized that uh, there are a couple of problems associated. One, you know, the, the wastage. It's something that, that you're not going to address overnight. And the second part, which is crucial, is what people does with that 10 million tons. You could take 10 million tons and put it into landfill sites, and that creates a huge problem, and I'll explain that. Um, if you look at carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas, as compared to methane, Methane is 86 times worse, a global warmer, compared to CO2. And when you do anaerobic composting... Is that what the food becomes, is the methane? In landfill yeah. sites, that's what it becomes. It, it, it's basically an organic compound, so it's a CHO. Fred, so what is the difference between anaerobic and aerobic? Just to explain to somebody that doesn't understand. Okay, so anaerobic is basically composting as we know it. Put it in an environment that, is, um, that doesn't have enough oxygen, it, it's not enhanced by temperature or any influence by man. Um, it's an uncontrolled environment and process. And generally speaking, as material then decompose, it would, uh, due to a lack of oxygen, some of the carbons will bind with hydrogen instead of forming CO2 and water. Like um, in aerobic um, composting. So anaerobic causes methane as one of the byproducts or you know of, of gases. Aerobic composting causes CO2 and H2O, which is the, the kind the kind of green uh, ass, uh, green greenhouse gas. Yeah. And the other one is the unkind by 86 fold. That is the difference. It's a huge difference and I think that is the, the crux of the matter. It's not about whether it's compostable or whether it's not compostable, it's how you compost it. Is it under controlled environment and does it use oxygen and, and temperature and, and mixing and, and some inputs to it? Is it controlled or is it uncontrolled? And that, that is the difference. It's a huge difference. So if I were to say this cup is compostable, fully compostable, there it is at there, 100% plant-based and it's compostable. If I give this to you, can we put it in the food 2050 machine and then what happens? Absolutely. We have done a test um, before and, and we can do so again. So literally within 24 hours, our machine would then fully digest this cup. You won't see any part of it. It will, be, it will become compost, uh, a very real compost that you can use. You can, you can plant tomatoes in it and obviously it's a very strong concentrated matter which you have to dilute with soil and, and so forth you have to do a bit of preparation but it's going back to nature it's going as back it into nature yeah. it's, that's the thing it's what we've taken out human nature what we've taken out we're now putting back and we're putting it back in a positive way and not just a negative 
landfall way. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so I'm going to give you these cups. We finish with them now. And next week, we are going to be growing some coriander in them. Watch the space. Uh, so in two weeks' time, I want you to come back. I'm inviting you back, Fred, uh, because Food 2050, we love what you guys are doing. Uh, and it's amazing to be a part of what you guys are busy with. So uh, this is a great platform to do it on, and we look forward to it. Cheers. Thank you so much, Robbie. <laughs>